In this video, we're going to learn a new type of uh, stochastic process that is called continuous time Markov process. Um, one notable example we have already learned in chapter 5 um, it's actually a Poisson process. It's one type of uh, continuous time Markov uh, process. I'll say mark continuous time Markov chain. Um, so this is our uh, stochastic uh, processes, which is uh, uh, x of t, and uh, t is time, which is a continuous variable. And we start our clock at uh, um, t equals 0, and the state space is discrete. Uh, for simplicity, we assume our state space is the set of all the non-negative integers, 0, 1, 2, which is the same as our uh, Poisson process. And uh, um, in order that this uh, stochastic process to be a continuous time market chain, um, it must satisfy the continuous time Markovian property. And uh, it's also known as a memoryless property, and it is. Um, the probability of uh, this stochastic process at uh, uh, t plus s is j given that s is some uh, previous time before uh, t plus s is i and we also know the state this uh, Markov process or say Markov chain is in before this time s, and let's call this time u, and this is a function, let's say of u, u is some time, u is a time before um, s, and we require u is uh, greater than or equal to 0, but strictly uh, less than s. This is as if we know um, the states uh, this uh, continuous time Markov chain is in before S. And the Markovian property says that it doesn't matter what happens before S, as long as S is given right here. The con this conditional probability only sees uh, S. All right, and this is Markovian property. And next is we also assume it satisfies the stationary transition probability property. And in the sense, stationary transition probability is very similar to the stationary increment we've learned for Poisson process. And the stationary transition says the following. Um, basically is this uh, transition probability is independent of t. I'm sorry, independent of s. Um, it only depends on on the time increment so how much time has elapsed between the two time points we consider? And as a result, this is the same thing as if we start our clock at uh, 0. So this is the same thing as xt is j given x0 is, uh, is i. And... Uh, um, Next, 
is uh, we try to interpret, so we try to rationalize how this uh, continuous time marker chain is in action. Okay, uh, basically, what we have instead of uh, some discrete time points, um, now we have a continuous time. Uh, for example, um, this markup chain, uh, and let me draw the state. So this is state 0, state 1, state 2. Initially, we may add uh, uh, state, uh, let's say state 1. Okay, And then we remain in state 1 after some time. And then suddenly we jump to uh, state 0. Okay, And then we remain in state 0 for some time. We may jump back to state 1. And we remain in state 1 for some time. We may jump to uh, state 2. And we remain in state 2 for some time. And we may jump to state 0. And etc. So we, we, we may have this type of a diagram. And we, we notice one thing. That is, uh, instead of uh, fixed time points for a uh, previous discrete time, markup chain where the transition only takes at uh, uh, discrete time points this time uh, we have a continuous markup chain that uh, the length between each transition all right is now a random variable and uh, um, this var this random variable um, Based on our previous experience with the Poisson, Poisson process, which is uh, a continuous time marker chain, um, it's actually follow the exponential distribution. All right. So it also has um, the memoryless property we learned before for the Poisson process, and we say. Um, the ti. So this is uh, like uh, instead of uh, um, this inter arrival time we used for Poisson process, we can interpret this as inter uh, transition time. It is the amount of time that the stochastic process uh, stays in state uh, i before make a transition into a different state. Keep this in mind. This is a this is a state bound. All right. Uh, in a way, um, it's very similar for some process. This is actually not a time bound. So this is a ti. This i here means the ith state. This is a uh, um, the amount of time x of t stays in state i before uh, moving into another state. For example, in the Poisson process, in the Poisson process uh, um, from state 0 and uh, after some exponential time, I will move to state 1. And for general continuous mark, uh, continuous time markup chain, we may move back to state zero after some another time. Okay. We assume there's some memoryless property, which is a stationary. In order that uh, this process is stationary or memoryless, uh, we have to have the following property: that is, uh, uh, ti t sub i is greater than or equal to s plus t, given uh, we have already weighted uh, s or more. This is the same thing as if we start our clock at s, like uh, at 0, and we have to wait uh, t or more. Okay. So t is the difference between uh, these two uh, times. And this is also um, stationary. This can be also interpreted as uh, the memoryless property. 
And now, based on solely this memoryless property, we can actually uh, deduce that uh, the inter-arrival time has to be exponentially distributed. So we have our claim uh, Ti has to be exponentially uh, distributed and uh, uh, with some rate, let's say this rate uh, is mu of i, okay? So, and how do we show it? Mm, we, we simply, we just use uh, um, our stationary increment uh, assumption, for example. If we want to find the probability of uh, ti is uh, greater than s plus t, we rewrite this as ti is greater than s plus t and ti is greater than s. Of course, because uh, um, this one is uh, a subset of this one, because uh, if t is greater than s plus t, uh, t sub i is greater than s, uh, of course, because uh, the time of interest is always uh, greater than or equal to zero. And now what happens is we can then rewrite this event or this probability using a conditional distribution, which is uh, uh, the trick we used in the Bayesian formula. And this is t sub i is greater than s plus t given t sub i is greater than s times t sub i is greater than s, the probability of. As a result, we have reached uh, the following conclusion. That is, well, um, first of all, let's uh, recall this formula right here. This is a stationary uh, increment assumption implies if we have weighted s or more, and we have to wait uh, um, s plus t, that amount of time is as if initially we just have to wait t times t. And this is exactly the probability right here, which means um, this actually implies t sub i is greater than s plus t is equal to uh, probability of uh, t sub i is greater than s, I'm sorry, t sub i is greater than t times the probability of t sub i is greater than s. And this is a very special formula. The reason is that this formula right here, okay, uh, if we think about um, this is as if um, it's a function of s plus t. This is like g of s plus t. The reason this is nothing but um, 1 minus the CDF with s plus t as a variable. As a result, it's a function of s plus t. And similar things happen here. We can let this guy to be g of s and this guy to be g of t. Okay. Um, and what happens is we have a function satisfy this uh, semi-group property and then we claim, okay, this function has to be exponential and let's try to prove it. Um, it's very straightforward. Um, we simply just take derivative. For example, um, we take derivative uh, with respect to, let's say, s. And what happens on the left? It's going to be g prime s plus t. Okay, um, This is a g prime of s times g of t. We're taking derivative with respect to s. And now we take derivative with respect to t. And we have g prime s plus t on the left as well. And due to the chain rule, the derivative of s plus t uh, take derivative with respect to t is 1. So uh, we can omit it. And now we take derivative of t, we'll get g prime of t here. 
So as a result, g prime of s um, times uh, g of t is g of s times g prime of t, and this implies um, g prime of s divided by g of s is equal to g prime of t um, divided by g of t. This actually implies g prime of t divided by g prime of t is a constant. And this is like a differential equation 101. As a result, g of t is has to be exponential. This has to be uh, c times e to the, let's say, alpha times t uh, for some uh, for some alpha and uh, for some uh, uh, c. So um, let's look back at here. Then um, we can conclude it has to be exponential distribution because uh, we have to make this g of t a some certain like uh, 1 minus the uh, CDF of some probability distribution function and this is our definition of uh, g of s plus t um, and then the only possible way of uh, this is true is uh, um, is g of t which is uh, Let's say, let's denote this as gti of t. The only uh, possible way of this happening is uh, uh, this is some mu i times e to the minus mu i uh, times t. Okay. And we have shown okay, the uh, inter. Uh, transition time is exponentially uh, distributed. It simply means the waiting time, the waiting time right here for this markup chain making the next transition is of uh, exponentially distributed random variable. And the expectation, or say the expected value, the expected value of uh, the, this intertransition time is 1 over uh, this rate, which is uh, mu i.